Sure, I'll go ahead and pause it now. We are determined to take bold and transformative steps, which are urgently needed to shift the world onto a sustainable and resilient path. We need to cover sustainability and resilience. 17 uh, sustainable development goals can be categorized uh, into some of the goals uh, categorized to the quality of life issue, the poverty, health, education, and job and work. This quality of life is supported by water, food, energy nexus, and also the natural and uh, artificial, artificial environment. And then uh, this the uh, component the uh, uh, decide the social system, including gender uh, inequality, a peace. Under the framework. Uh, due to the climate change, water-related disaster uh, has been intensified dramatically, and its effect, uh, artificial and uh, natural environment, and uh, water uh, the, uh, uh, and the sanitation. But uh, the, according to the, this, uh, the uh, impact and damage propagate the uh, water, food, energy nexus, and quality of life at the end, the social system uh, got the damage. Under the, this uh, the, the structure, we have now the pandemic, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. This is the, the directly direct, uh, related to the health issue, but uh, you can understand the, uh, this impact, the uh, uh, propagate all of the uh, component of the, our sustainability. How should humanity survive uh, the, such kind of the risk and live with the, uh, these risks uh, in a sustainable way? This is uh, the question, key question of this uh, session. So to respond to the, this question, uh, firstly, we would like to uh, invite the, uh, the keynote speaker, the uh, uh, Professor uh, Kenzo Hiroki. Uh, the, uh, he's uh, the professor of the National or the uh, Research Institute of the Policy Studies, uh, Japan. Uh, professor Hiroki, uh, could you please be, uh, give a keynote to us? Thank you. Thank you, Professor Koike. I'm really glad to give that presentation here. And I'll talk about the uh, current status of the water-related disaster risk reduction and the COVID-19 situation. And we will discuss what we are going to do about this situation. Next, please. So the number of the natural disasters in the world is, has been increasing since uh, one century back. And recently, it has uh, sort of uh, tapered off because of, next please, uh, we had made a progress in several areas in society. Like uh, we had seen a scientific progress. We have seen, for example, focus on the typhoons and heavy rains. And that also increased, uh, uh, enhanced uh, literacy, public literacy on such a uh, scientific progress. Because for example, the, uh, if the typhoon comes and there's a focus, people can respond to that based on their experience of the scientific knowledge. And there's an uh, investment in disaster risk reduction and better governance. But at the same time, the, uh, the number of the disaster has not dis decreased dr drastically because there's a population growth, urbanization, and climate change. So we can say that we are still in a precarious situation of the disaster risks. And next, then COVID-19 happened. So the question is how we can address the disaster risks under this uh, new threatening situation of COVID-19. Next, please. The high level experts and leaders span on water and disaster comprising 20 leaders and experts on water related disasters have, made a have given a message to the, to the international community. 
It says in the current COVID-19 environment, immediate, immediate attention has been placed on mitigating COVID-19 infections and treating those who become ill. However, the threat of water disaster remain as imminent now as before COVID-19. So implementation of disaster risk re reduction strategies and preemptive actions that factor in the current pandemics, pandemics are needed to protect areas impacted by water related disasters from also becoming new epicenters of the pandemic. Next. So let's see the example. The last year, the cyclone Alpha, a big uh, uh, cyclone, had hit the area of the uh, India and Bangladesh. Next. It uh, hit, you know, it landed on the coast of West Bengal and went through closely uh, near the city of Calcutta. And if you see the on the if you see the right graph, this is the number of the new cases of the COVID-19. After the uh, one week after the uh, passing the uh, uh, cyclone, the number of the infected uh, cases have jumped. Uh, more by more than double. So this is a quite a dangerous situation that is a, a co-occurring situation of the pandemic and disasters. Next, please. And at the same time, uh, we have to turn our eyes to water and hygiene situation in the world to combat COVID-19. Next. First of all, uh, this is a, a picture of the virus. Why? Because you now I'm now explaining why uh, hand washing is so effective in combating COVID-19. As you can see in this picture, the uh, virus of COVID-19 is uh, enveloped by a lipid bilayer films. Actually, soap and water can dissolve those bilayers. So that makes the virus uh, turn apart. So Water and soap does not only wash away the virus, but also actually kills the virus. So you may understand why your hand washing is so important to fight against COVID-19. Next. Nevertheless, 2.100 million people might say, how can we wash hands without easily available water because the water is not at their hand. They have to fetch it by taking 30 minutes walk on uh, <clears throat> go and return. And even they do not have a soap on their, at their home. Next please. Actually, 60, 60% of the global people do not have uh, access to the hand washing facility, either soap or water. So we have to, suddenly improve the situation if we are to fight recurrent pandemics and epidemics. Next, please. So the key is to achieve a sound water cycle, ensuring us a good provision of water and sanitation, and also prevention from the flood-related uh, water-related disasters. So this is our, our entire goal to ensure that the water cycle we are experiencing the living in is maintained and conserved and well used in our neighboring city, uh, neighboring environment. Next. To do that, we have, had, we have seen several global actions to address water and DR under COVID-19. Next. The high-level expert and leaders on water and disasters have announced a principle to address water-related disaster risk reduction under the COVID-19 pandemic, how to address disasters even we are experiencing COVID-19. There are 10 principles starting from enhancing leaders' awareness on disaster risk reduction in the pandemic, integrate the risk management of disasters and pandemic, provide clean water sanitation and hygiene sustainable during and after disasters and etc. Next. And under each of the principles, there's a sub principles. For example, uh, under the principle number one, enhancing leader surveillance, there are a few categorized sub principles like uh, 
as you can see here, be aware that water-related disasters are imminent in countries and cities while they are under COVID-19 situation. Step by step, decision making and action will help. Never give up. Ensuring in, ensure integrating disaster and pandemic risk management strategy and actions. And the principle two, there's a sub principle like a provide hazard maps and DR advice to hospitals and health facilities before disaster strike. Review and improve existing early warning and evacuation systems so that they meet requirement for both safe evacuation and prevention of infection by COVID-19. Next please. You can, uh, you can take a look at it by visiting help website. And this is an example of an, uh, another example of the, uh, of the global community addressing the water and disaster situation under COVID-19. The fifth United Nations Special Seminary Session on Water and Disasters were held uh, online on June 25th, 25th this year. As you can see here, the world dignitaries and leaders have gathered together to discuss and take uh, and promote actions globally. Next. Uh, this is the uh, agenda of the special session. And the objectives are to share experience lessons and good practices on what the DR, DR under COVID-19, to discuss ways forward and promote concrete actions, and to propose concrete steps to build post-corona world. Who joined the uh, session? There we had a uh, uh, chair of the help, together with the Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, and president of the 75th session of the General Assembly of the United Nations. And as a keynote speakers, we have uh, six dignitaries and head of the states and government, including His Majesty Emperor of Japan, President of Hungary, Tajikistan, Guyana, and Prime Minister of Bangladesh, and Princess Victoria of the Sweden. Next, please. So those, at the time of the uh, uh, serious discussion, uh, we have seen the uh, launching of the important principles, new one, to build resilient post-corona world. So we have had, uh, uh, you know, we have uh, had uh, a lot of experiences on under COVID-19, and this is very much related to, related to risk management. Those experiences have been reflected to the management of society and the community in the future. So. The, uh, the principles include uh, eight lines, starting from integrating uh, all crisis related sectors, including DR, uh, keep effectively coping with disasters, improve governance system, decision making and funding to cope with the crisis by reflecting on experience of COVID-19, reflecting the experience of COVID-19 on practices and so forth. So these principles are also available for you to retrieve uh, in the help website. Next, please. So at the end of the day, the session has made a, uh, a clear message to the international co community. It says there was common agreement in the session that the post COVID-19 world should be most, more resilient so as to be better prepared for future shocks including pandemics and climate-related disasters. Countries should unite to turn the challenges into opportunities to achieve global quality growth, which is more sustainable and resilient and without disparity. The pandemic has made clear, crystal clear that water is pivotal to survive now and in the future. It is imperative that water and disaster be the main issue to be discussed at the conference on the Midterm Conference Review of the implementation of the objectives of the International Decade for Action that happens in 2023. Next. So having explained what the International Committee has done to take uh, to address the issue of the water related disaster reduction and COVID-19, uh, 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 we have to discuss the next steps. This is particularly true for the next 15 minutes. For next step, we have to see the process and the contents. Next, please. So global uh, process on disaster risk reduction has seen the uh, lapse 
of the actions uh, at the beginning of the 2020 because of COVID-19. Next. But the gap was quickly filled by the efforts of the international or experts and leaders. Uh, they added a lot of activities in the vacancy, which was created by COVID-19, as you can see here. Next. As a result of that, we are, as scheduled, are going to have a very fruitful discussion in the Ninth World Water Forum, Fourth Asia Pacific Water Summit, and finally, UN Midterm Review of Water Action Decade in 2023. Next. A new initiative has also started. This is an example. Uh, uh, WMO and the UN Water have started a UN Water and Climate Leaders Group that are comprising a head of the states and government and experts and leaders. They'll discuss how they can address water and climate change issues. Next. So the global process for water-related disasters and uh, sand water cycle is in progress, as you have seen. But what extra do we need to do now? Actually, we need concrete cases and examples to convince leaders and all stakeholders in those processes to take their actions. Next. That's the reason why we are here. Let us share and discuss our showcases of actions for post-corona world. Next. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Hiroki, for your uh, very uh, excellent guiding the, the uh, uh, keynote speaker speech, uh, which is uh, very informative for our discussion and uh, uh, on uh, the, our future direction. Thank you. So next, uh, we'll invite uh, the uh, five panelists uh, for the, uh, uh, the uh, presentation by each at first. Uh, first, the panelist is Dr. Anthony uh, Sales. Uh, he is uh, the region director of the uh, Department of Science and Technology, the Philippines. Uh, Dr. Sales, please. Thank you, Dr. Koike. May I now have my presentation material? The slide, please. Uh, first of all, let me extend my courtesies to Dr. Koike, Professor Koike, to Professor Hiroki, our keynote speaker and my fellow panelists in this session. Uh, it's my pleasure to present to you the challenges and the best practices of the Hydrology for Environment, Life and Policy or Help Davao Network. For uh, information, Help Davao Network is one of the operational river basin organizations under the UNESCO Help Network or Network of River Basin Organizations across the, across the globe. Next slide, please. So this would be the key messages in this presentation. First, uh, what were the strategies that we employed to achieve high literacy on disaster risk reduction? And I'm happy to present uh, the project that we have with iCharm on the e-learning and the online synthesis system and the uh, selection of facilitators. Second is uh, how do we plan to, to deploy the OSS system in uh, Davao City as an example or as a showcase, as uh, according to Dr. Hiroki earlier. Um, and how do we plan to craft OSS in the local dialect to make uh, our messages more understandable by our stakeholders here in, in the region. And lastly, I will um, present some suggestions, uh, calls for action on how we can promote coherence among disaster risk reduction, climate change adaptation, and sustainable development. Next slide, please. To achieve high literacy on disaster risk reduction, I think we need to be inno innovative in really relating our messages uh, on uh, disasters. And uh, one of the strategies that we employed is the e-learning session uh, that we conducted uh, in collaboration with iCharm. And we consider this as very instrumental in the development of local policies and in reaching the depth of local knowledge. I think it's important that we uh, bring knowledge 
up to the grassroots through various researches, advocacies, and capacity building programs on relevant areas. Next slide, please. As part of this platform project with iCharm, we uh, intend to train our stakeholders here in Davao on the online synthesis system and uh, select a network, a pool of facilitators that will help us in translating and transmitting uh, knowledge to our stakeholders. And uh, to make this uh, exercise possible, or strategy uh, effective, we employed what we call the pentahelix approach by engaging stakeholders from the five sectors of society, and I'm referring to government, industry, academe, civil society, and the media. You might be surprised why we included the media as a, as a partner, because uh, we consider the media as very important in communicating the messages that we want to relay to our publics or stakeholders. And of course, we, in the end, we want to develop what we call communities of practice. And we can do this only if we engage all sectors of society. And uh, we also decided to uh, include uh, members in, as facilitators with different backgrounds or different disciplines to guarantee a good mix of sciences in the pool of disciplines, as well as get representation from the different levels of governance from the national government to the local government up to the grassroots level. Next slide, please. It's important to come up with a policy. Uh, knowledge will be for naught if uh, there's no enabling policy that will facilitate the transfer of knowledge to its users. And uh, that is why uh, we included the media as part of our partners because uh, they have the tools and they have the expertise in communication. And we also included key disaster managers coming from the national and local government units as OSS facilitators and integrated uh, the aspect of sustainability in the deployment of the OSS. Uh, what we have done is to talk with the Davao River Basin Alliance, Management Alliance, because they have the structure already and the mechanisms to sustain the OSS. We need a host and we need the, man the OSS to be managed by effective uh, uh, people on the ground so that this uh, system can be used uh, in perpetuity. Next slide. The other, uh, the other uh, strategy is to develop, uh, we plan to develop a global OSS modules that can be used across uh, different areas as well as guidelines, which can later be customized, not just through translation into local dialects, but also by integrating local principles and practices. We have done this for the our guidelines uh, for the IWRM, in, Integrated Water Resources Management Guidelines of the UNESCO. What we did was localize these guidelines by integrating local principles and practices in Davao City and Davao Region so that it's uh, more understandable by stakeholders at the local level. Next slide. These are the keys I think we think that uh, was uh, key to localizing the OSS. One is uh, it should be, there should be co-development. And this is what we call, this is one precept of sustainability science that when we introduce a new uh, technology or new uh, uh, procedure, there has to be engagement of all possible stakeholders from conceptualization to development to implementation, as well as monitoring and evaluation. And we need to combine resources from these different sectors in uh, coming up with the tools, the knowledge tools for decision-making, uh, developing the management plans and policies, as well as establishing communities of practice. This last, last bullet, I think, is very crucial because uh, even with the knowledge, armed with the knowledge, they still have to adopt 
and apply this knowledge in their daily life no for resilience to to make individuals as well as communities resilient to disasters next slide So our perspective is OSS is not just about managing disasters. It, it is about building sustainability and resilience of our future communities uh, in Davao region. Next slide. So what are our plans post COVID uh, to develop river-based disaster resilience and sustainability? Next slide. We have to contend with these uh, multi-layered effects of the pandemic. First, we have to contend with health and biological hazards uh, when we manage disasters. Uh, we know that people have been displaced by disasters and uh, who are exposed to risk. And it's also it is also difficult to observe social distancing and proper hand washing in relocation sites. So, um, we need to come up with strategies that will address these issues. And uh, we also have to contend with mobility and travel restrictions. There's difficulty in rescuing or moving people to safer locations. And there's also difficulty in transporting emergency goods to intended beneficiaries. And then third uh, are the socioeconomic impacts of disasters aggravated by the pandemic. Um, we know that many Filipinos are dependent on remittances no, uh, of Filipinos uh, from overseas, but many of them have lost jobs. And therefore, uh, this has to be uh, considered when we make our disaster plans. Next slide. So the idea is to incorporate COVID-19 uh, effects in the RRM plans. Uh, the sad thing is uh, at present, our DRRM plans in the Philippines do not have not considered, you know, the effects of pandemic and the implica implications of pandemic, and therefore uh, DOST have initiated the development and implementation of what we call a pandemic plan that will prepare communities and individuals to deal with pandemics, uh, even in the face of disasters. So to address health and biological hazards, we have established what we call the I am David NICER Center. It's a research center for interdisciplinary applied modeling, data analytics, and bio biology of infectious diseases. We also have the Philippine Genome Center. We have the Virology Center and the Regional Health Research and Development Agenda to prioritize health and disasters. Next slide. Uh, Dr. Sales, could you please the, uh, uh, summarize? Wrap up, yes, okay. Uh, let me go to my last uh, slides on the call for action. Next slide. Next slide, please. These are the uh, strategies that we propose. Uh, can we go back a bit? Uh, we need to develop the global standards for OSS, customize the RRM platforms, as well as incorporate post COVID-19 in the RRM plans, programs, investments, and policies. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, dear Dr. Sales. So next, uh, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Sanjiva Irangashinga. He is the deputy director of the Mahaberi Authority uh, of the Sri Lanka. Uh, Mr. Uh, the Irangashinga, please. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Yes. Do you, thank you, Professor. Do you know about the Pearl of the Indian Ocean? Have you heard about the ancient granary of the East at sea? Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sanjay Vilanga Singha from Mahal Authority of Sri Lanka. It's great privilege to me to present about Mahal Authority of Sri Lanka for this important session. Next slide, please. The Sri Lanka has great ancient heritage with a history of over 2,500 years. Ancient time, it's called Dunnery of the East. The first Nobel great, no, uh, great Nobelman who started the great irrigation system in Sri Lanka was King Masambar. It was in first century. Those ancient period rulers ruled the country by the concept, temple concept. The greatest era in the history of irrigation in Sri Lanka was Kimhaparakambal era, that was in 12th century. During the colonial period, there were no significant improvements in water sector. 
the right hand side you red stone and white color shows the dry stone and blue color shows the mahavali uh, basin it belongs to wet and dry stone the situation before 1917s the wet stone it cover less than 30 percentage of total land area uh, more than 75 percentage of total population were living in dust area the rice was insufficient in wet stone If we talk about dry zone situation, uh, more than sixty percentage of total land cover there, and uh, less than twenty five percentage of total population were living in this area. Uh, most of the time, most to the flood, drought, uh, diseases, and poverty. Finally, the dry zone was largely empty. so government had decided to reclaim the dry zone for irrigated agricultural and shift the population to dry zone so government initiated the mahavali development program to achieve the food security controlling flood making irrigation facility to dry zone and water supply for the dry zone people and so on next slide please next slide please uh, next slide. this is the mahavali system it consists of large reservoirs hydro power plants diversion canals downstream areas it has more than 20 number of irrigation systems and more than uh, nine hydro power plants next slide please uh, this is simplified uh, mahavali system characteristic diagrams next uh, the system located uh, kotmala oya uma oya next next please uh, kotmala oya uma oya and some other mahavali uh, uh, river with this location next please at polgolla we divert water issue water for ancient and uh, new irrigation systems in dry zone through the trans basin canal at minipay we divert water into the another river basin called madura next please the uh, next please new reservoirs and uh, some of hydro powers are uh, managed by mahalotra sri lanka ancient irrigation systems next please ancient irrigation systems are managed by the department of irrigation next slide please uh, still actually we have uh, the disaster issues uh, droughts and uh, floods recently we have implemented uh, four uh, projects uh, mainly focusing on mitigation flood and drought next please actually uh, this situation and not address the climate change significantly next please a very recent study on climate change impact assessment and resilience strategies for optimizing benefits of mahali basin done by icha they use for number of general circulation models under simify they use statically downscale and bias corrected rainfall data for the study and they use web rri hydrological model to assess the hydrological parameters in the mahali basin they examine dam operation strategies by applying dam modulus and reservoir rules for japanese meteorological agency seasonal predictions and nisip short term weather forecasting finally they propose several policy changes for each sectors involved in the operation of this river basin next slide please uh, these are their findings uh, they found that upstream will receive more rainfall and uh, southwest and intermediate to rainfall and discharge will increase uh, for this one they propose seasonal forecast inform reservoir operation this will benefit for water food and energy sector for example for water sector they propose diversion of water to agricultural in the energy sector they propose hydro power from clean water next slide please likewise they propose uh, several uh, uh, policy changes next please and uh, based on their findings now we are planning to consider this research funding for our future operation next slide please so actually next slide uh, improve our system next slide please uh, we need to improve our forecast inform reservoir operation and also we need to optimize our dam operation and also we need to strengthen our coordination among our other stakeholders and actually the implement of non structural measures by changing through the evidence based policy making for decision making is very important for that we need funding for science and technology 
best implement for the existing system. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, there, Mr. Iranga Shinga, uh, the, for your uh, uh, integrated talk on uh, your basin. Next, uh, we'd like to invite uh, Professor and Dr. The Eko Wina uh, Ilianto. The, he is uh, the, the director uh, of the, uh, the Ministry of the Public Works and uh, uh, the Housing of Indonesia. So, uh, the uh, Professor uh, Ilianto, please. Thank you very much, Professor Koike, and also Professor uh, Hiroki, Hiro, Professor Hiroki, yeah? and also the panelists, all panelists here. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, today I would like to inform about the post COVID, sorry, this is a post COVID in River Basin Disaster Resilience, Sustainability, and Sound Water Cycle in Indonesia. Next, please. Yeah, this is a problem in Indonesia. This is uh, Indonesia is many, many potential of disaster, mainly uh, water related disaster. This is uh, because Indonesia is major, uh, many, many volcanoes and also the uh, also the water related disaster, light floods and also the others. Next, next, yeah. Yeah, this is the in Indonesia. There is all, all, uh, called the Ring of Fire area. It's a very high risk and threats of non-natural disaster, biological hazard, and also maybe the others. More than 60% of total projected losses in the Asia Pacific, including Indonesia, came from hydrometeorological disaster. So infrastructural resilience to natural disaster and global climate change must be a priority and integrated program to synergy and cooperation between stakeholders and public works, both at the central and regional levels. Next. Yeah, we can see that this, uh, the flood disaster are becoming more frequently because of uh, maybe it might be uh, climate change yeah, in Indonesia. This is like a flood in, in Jakarta, also in the flash flood in East Java and also in South Sulawesi and, and also landslide in East Java also. And the others, uh, the others uh, is uh, uh, eruption, eruption, uh, debris, uh, de, uh, debris flood come from uh, uh, volcanoes eruption. eruption. Okay, and the others is uh, the the floods from uh, in the beach in bank, uh, in the in the beach yeah in the near beach Jakarta also. Then uh, so need the life system resilience and infrastructure. Okay, next. Yeah, beside uh, beside the natural uh, disaster such as water related disaster. We also impact, uh, has, had been impacted by the COVID-19 pandemics. So this increasing people's vulnerability in responding to the effects of climate change and also national, so the uh, effect to the national, uh, uh, the national problem. Yeah. So we need the strategies and adaptation efforts. Yeah. Okay. Next, next please. Yeah. This is a. Uh, Temperature trends in Indonesia. Temperature trends in Indonesia. The, the rise and rise of Indonesia air temperature is still below the global temperature, but but rose quite significantly starting in the 1970s. Yeah, 2020, 2020 was the second warmest year after 2016. The, so that is uh, and also the in uh, in the rain trends also. Have, uh, in Indonesia, it's extreme now. Extreme rain is uh, extreme rain, is rain with intensity more than 115 millimeter per day. In 1981, the incidence of extreme rainfall in Indonesia was only about 10 events per year. But in, in 2020, the number of extreme rainfall events has increased to about 14 events per year. So this is the, the, the triggering of hydrometeorological disaster, threats such as floods, 
flash floods and landslides also increase from year to year. Okay, then uh, next, sorry, next, next please. Yeah, uh, so we need the operation and maintenance. Uh, so that's why we need the uh, uh, fully operation and maintenance of reservoirs. The effort is to uh, the effort is to reduce the like uh, methane gas or, or methane gas or so the others. Yeah, uh, so the efforts to reduce like methane reser emission from reservoir can be made in the following ways, like, such like land clearing will be reservoirs, cleaning of reservoirs from aquatic plant, and also improving reservoir water quality. And then the and the others operation and maintenance. Uh, okay, next, please. Yeah, uh, sorry, this is a, uh, there is a other, but I will inform again. Next, maybe. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you very much. This is uh, for uh, my. Uh, the infrastructure, the building of infrastructure should be continued to operation the maintenance and also the improve uh, our resilience and maybe mainly in the water related disasters. Thank you very much for attention. Thank you very much, dear uh, Dr. Elianto. Mm -hmm. uh, the, for your introduction to the US, uh, the condition, uh, situation, and, and uh, the major strategy. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next, the, we would like to invite uh, the Miss uh, Gurjamar Narmamedova. Uh, she is uh, the uh, international coordinator of the Central Asia and, and the Caucasus, uh, the Global Water Partnership. Uh, the uh, Miss Gurjamar, please. Thank you. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, good evening. The Global Water Partnership, CASENA, that is an integral part of the global network of GVP and unites the national water partnerships of nine countries in Central Asia and Caucasus. Today, I would like to share an experience and outputs of consultations on water-related disaster risk reduction during the COVID-19 pandemic that took place in the beginning of this year in the country of Caucasus and in two Central Asia countries, Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan, with the support of our Japanese colleagues. Next, please. Uh, may I ask you, please? Uh, now it is clear that the COVID-19 is not uh, only a challenge itself that is supposed to stay longer with us as now we, there are new varieties of this virus. But this phenomenon is twinning the problem that are permanently faced by people in a pre-COVID period, like water-related disasters to which Central Asia countries are exposed regularly. That is why it was decided to support the initiative to hold consultations on the risk of water-related disasters during the COVID-19 pandemic and to inform the national authorities on health principles. While for majority of the countries at the time of these consultations, the discussed issue was considered as a theoretical one, Uzbekistan unfortunately got an experience of real accident at the beginning of COVID period. In the 1st of May, there was a serious dam failure in Sardoba water reservoir. And thanks to photo records, you can see the severity of this catastrophe. So Uzbekistan was the first country in the Central Asia that express an interest to organize the consultations for policymakers on DRR and COVID-19 responders. Next, please. At the time of consultation, Kyrgyzstan was not experienced on facing this twin problem. But unfortunately, the water-related disasters happened everywhere this year, made the health principles even more important than it was before. Next, please. May I ask? Next, please. Um, okay, <laughs> please. These consultations were, uh, um, the consultations in Uzbekistan was organized by Uzbekistan Water Partnership uh, in collaboration with IFAS agency in Uzbekistan under the support of international community. Thank you. Uh, 
the representatives of key national authorities and institutions that plan, make decision and practice actions on water related uh, disasters, as well as rep representatives of uh, high level um, expert and leader panel on water and disasters from Japan, as well as representative of Japanese embassy in Uzbekistan and uh, experts of global water partnership network provided input in expert discussions. As per result of this discussion, there, um, there was a decision to develop the practical guidance for decision makers and practitioners on how their efforts uh, to reduce the risk of water related disasters during the COVID-19 pandemic and how to be better prepared on concurrent water related disasters and pandemic uh, was taken. Draft roadmap on the implementation of task um, was also um, developed. Next, please. Kyrgyzstan became the second country in Central Asia where health consultations took place as well. It was also organized by Kyrgyzstan Water Partnership under the strong support of state uh, agency of water resources of Kyrgyzstan. The representatives of key national authorities, including educational and scientific institutions, as well as representatives of business communities and public organizations, took place in these intersectorial consultations. Uh, the roadmap was also developed during these consultations, and Kyrgyzstan authorities uh, confirmed their interest to continue their cooperation on this issue. Next, please. And to resume, I'd like to bring your attention on the table um, where, uh, which you can see on the, please, um, on the table developed on the basis of consultations. Here you can see what kind of principles are considered as most relevant as per opinion of participants of these consultation processes in Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan. Uh, I'd like to bring your attention that all materials, reference books, reports, video records uh, are available on our communication platforms in English and in Russian. Uh, relevant links were provided within the presentations and additional comments or requests could be sent uh, to our email that is presented here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Narba Meitaba, uh, for your very integrated and also the uh, very active uh, consultation uh, process study or the mm -hmm. consultation itself uh, in cooperation with uh, uh, the two countries. Uh, the last but uh, the not uh, the uh, least, the, uh, we would invite the Mr. Akihiro Shimasaki. Uh, he is a director of the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism of Japan. Mr. Shimazaki, please. Thank you, Professor Koike. I will try to briefly explain my presentation. Uh, next, please. Uh, this slide shows uh, how the, we uh, developed and uh, amend the uh, basic law time to time to address the issues at that time. So the, at the beginning, the, our main objective was flood control. And uh, the, after the rapid urbanization and the industri industrialization, so we added uh, the coordination for water use in 1964. And then the 1997, we added environment at the, for, to the objective and uh, uh, incorporated uh, public consultation in the river management planning system. Next, please. In uh, 2014, we developed another act uh, the, about the water cycle. So uh, under the water cycle, uh, there are many, but uh, I would like to int uh, introduce that uh, every five years, uh, the basic plan on the water cycle uh, has already developed and uh, will be reviewed every five years. Next, please. So uh, the, uh, this slide shows the, our uh, results of our efforts. So the vertical scale is the number of fatalities and uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, horizontal was yes. So uh, the uh, the bar shows the flood protection budget. So the series of investment for the flood flood protection measures. So the number of fatalities significantly reduced in the years. Next, please. 
but however, uh, the due to the climate change impact, uh, that we are now facing the yeah uh, disaster issues again. So the recent years, we uh, the severe flood disasters occurred uh, every recent years. Next, please. So uh, we uh, last year we introduced a new policy for the river basin management. Uh, we call the yeah, river basin disaster resilience and the sustainability by all. So the uh, important prospect of measures is uh, yeah we I'd like to highlight three keywords: resilience and the inclusion and the sustainability. So we are now trying trying to the revise the plans, a river management plan, incorporating the climate change impact, and uh, so we are trying to the uh, involve all the uh, stakeholders uh, to uh, promote the new policy. Next, please. Uh, this is the outline of the river basin disaster resilience and the sustainability by all. So uh, three uh, items, flood protection, exposure reduction, and disaster resilience. So we are uh, trying to uh, do everything we can do to reduce the uh, disaster risks and uh, mitigate the risk itself in the catchment, in the river areas, flood plains. So uh, not only the river managers, uh, the, we are trying to include the uh, uh, companies and the municipalities and the every citizen to reduce to tackle with the disasters. Next, please. So uh, now the this slide is the most important today's presentation. Uh, this show, uh, shows the yeah, best practice of basin management, the example of the Kumamoto prefectures. So the uh, upper right side, uh, the ultimate target is a quality growth. And the lower left side is about the uh, water cycle issues. Kumamoto is uh, famous for the abundant groundwater. So the, the almost every drinking water covered by the groundwater. Uh, so, the uh, usage of groundwater is incorporated in the culture of the city. So the, uh, and the, not only the water use, but also the uh, left side, upper left side is a flood control, uh, flood protection measures. In the uh, Kumamoto has a history of the, yeah, uh, more than 100, yeah, 100 years ago, the, in the samurai era, started the yeah uh, the flood protection measures. So the in recent years, so the the city facing the repeated floods, but uh, the the city he, he every time overcome the uh, the disasters and uh, try to improve the uh, safety in the city. So uh, this uh, we name it the showcase of Kumamoto. So the, we are now preparing to the, introduce the results, how the flood management and the uh, water cycle and the groundwater use was merged and the, uh, how the city was uh, developed and the, the basic, uh, yeah, uh, implementing these uh, uh, activities. So uh, the, uh, now we, yeah, so I think five minutes is too short. So the uh, I think I think we can show the this good example. So next, please. So the next year we have the uh, Asia Pacific Water Summit uh, in Kumamoto Prefecture. So I think uh, next time I may have more time to introduce the activities and our yeah progress. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, there, uh, Mr. Smazaki, the, uh, for your uh, the wide range the introduction of the, the uh, policies of uh, Japan and also the uh, case study in Kumamoto, and also the, the uh, one of the global process the Kumamoto Asian Pacific uh, the uh, Water Summit uh, to be held in Kumamoto. Thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, according to original schedule <laughs> from now, uh, we would like to have a, a discussion session, but uh, the uh, uh, time uh, is running. 
So it is very difficult for us there to have uh, the, such a session. Uh, the, uh, uh, our original uh, the uh, question, the, uh, can I share the, my screen? Uh, uh, Yeah, uh, the, to enhance the sustainability and the resilience under COVID-19 and also the climate change, uh, how can we contribute to, uh, the, uh, to enhancing the, the sustainability and resilience? Uh, from the governance point of view and from finance point of view, from science and technology point of view, uh, that is the our uh, original uh, the discussion stru structure. But uh, I believe the all of the parties have already uh, introduced the idea. Uh, at this moment, the I would ask the uh, the keynote speaker, uh, Professor Hiroki, do you have any comment? Yeah, uh, I was very much impressed by the, each of the presentation on the showcases. And actually, you know, they have answered to the questions mm. uh, Professor Koike has just presented. At uh, the outset of the of my of my presentation, I said that the governance, finance, and science are three critical uh, factors to reduce disasters, even under the COVID nineteen. And uh, to answer that question, for example. Philippine, uh, Filipino colleagues have said that you know a new uh, newly developed online synthesis system is quite important, and that is you know in my way of thinking, connecting science and governance. So I learned that you know not only improving governance, financing, and science in an individual manner, independent manner, but also connecting and creating synergy of improvement of the three tripartite factors of the governance, finance, and science. So one key message from Philippines is that use science for better governance. And at the same time, the next example of the Sri Lanka shows that the science should be also used for wise investment. For example, the in the Mahabir River, the uh, improved operation of the infrastructure will improve by making use of the newly developed science technology. Is getting a better result out of the same investment. So the message is use science for wise investment. And also the case of Japan, in uh, Kumamoto, he says that improved governance is a prerequisite for better and enhanced investment by showing the case of the uh, improvement, historical improvement of the legal system and the increased investment. And the case of the uh, Uzbekistan and Indonesia uh, gives us a, a quite distinct message that we have to use global knowledge and international insight for local actions, for local for the benefit of the local people. Uh, she uh, in the Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan uh, gave a clear message that the principles to address disaster, water related disaster risk reduction under COVID-19 is now widely used for the local people through local actions. So. I can say uh, that these messages and showcases clearly indicate that not only science, governance, and investment are three critical factors to address water-related disaster risk reduction under COVID-19, but also the connecting and integrating science, governance, and finance is a key in further creating disaster-free society in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the, uh, Dr. Hiroki, uh, Professor Hiroki. So the, uh, let me, uh, yeah, the Professor Hiroki, the uh, <coughs> summarize all of the presenters' keyword. <coughs> uh, the, I would uh, 
introduce the my note from the governance we learned the help principles uh, the, this is a very important guideline and uh, also the network by multi stakeholders and uh, communication encouraged by facilitator is very important function for development of the uh, governance and consultation process uh, based on the science uh, and other example uh, is a very important. With regard to the finance, the not so clear message, but the new budget framework the, uh, can be established by new policy uh, in case of Japan. And uh, with regard to the, the science and technology, understand issues related to the, the resilience and the, uh, the sustainability in a comprehensive manner uh, study uh, the, uh, and their causes. So for that purpose, the integrated assessment and online system, system the e-learning under the COVID-19 is a very effective. And uh, conducting planning, implementation, and uh, evaluation for resolution is a set of the activities strongly required. So community of practice and evidence-based uh, decision making are critical. Based on the, this uh, the example, we would uh, uh, they provide a showcase to the uh, the uh, to uh, uh, for sharing the, the our idea uh, and experiences widely. Uh, so that should be uh, put on uh, global processes. They are, as uh, uh, Professor Hiroki mentioned at first, as uh, uh, Mr. Shimazaki mentioned, we will have uh, the fourth Asian Pacific the uh, Water Summit uh, uh, in April next year. Uh, in Kumamoto. So we are very happy to uh, be, have a, a good discussion based on the today's uh, the, uh, discussion uh, in Kumamoto. Uh, thank you very much for your cooperation. Uh, the, uh, this session is uh, uh, John. Thank you very much for your uh, great cooperation. Thank you. Thank you.